In March of 2005, our cameras were here in Rhode Island to video the Grand National Grouse and Woodcock Invitational Championship. We dealt with snow and failing equipment. Three years later, we are headed back for another attempt. This year, 14 dogs have been invited instead of 16, the number having been reduced by the directors by two from the last time we were here for this event. Seven of the dogs were qualified by amateurs and seven by pros. The Grand National Grouse Champion will be here by automatic bid. Also receiving an automatic invitation are the winners of the 2007 Invitational at Gladwin, Michigan. Champion Springfield Orvis and runner-up Magic's Rocky Belboa, but both declined. As a result, 13 of the entries were invited by their performances at Grouse and Woodcock Trials in the calendar year 2007. We are headed for the drawing, which is scheduled for 7 o'clock this evening at the home of John Jill and Aaron Stolgaitis. Each dog will be drawn to run one hour starting tomorrow, Wednesday. On Thursday, they will run for another hour on a different course and a different time of day. The judges will evaluate the first two days and call back dogs of their choice for the one hour finals on Friday. Running this early in the year can result in problems with the weather, as we saw three years ago. And a late spring might mean the woodcock are not back yet. But obviously, the snow is gone here in Rhode Island, and the forecast doesn't call for any, though there is some rain in the forecast. And we get a good sign as we arrive. This is something many of us haven't seen in months. Several robins are hopping around the front yard. And if the robins are back, usually the woodcock are too. Invitational Secretary George Johnson and his wife Shirley are among the first to arrive. With him are Tom and Kelly Frucci of Beaverton, Michigan. Tom is one of the elected judges for the championship. Ray Gorman of Colebrook, New Hampshire is the other elected judge. Soon other handlers, owners, and well-wishers arrive. Inside, a nice spread is laid out for everyone to enjoy. The room bristles with anticipation, and then we get down to business. Everybody in here, it's here knows what an honor it is to compete in this trial, only because it takes the best of the best. Uh, hope everybody has a good time. Uh, hopefully there'll be lots of birds. And I guess the next thing I gotta do is read this letter that I got. It's from Dave the Holster. I have one. Sorry, it says, Happy New Year's, George. Orvis will not be coming to the Invitational this year. Please find an enclosed check to help co-host a cocktail party in his honor. Good luck with the championship. Sincerely, Dave. I think we ought to give uh, old uh, Orvia at least a round of applause yesterday. The first one is uh, Stokely's Ginger B, setter female. Mark Foreman, handler. Second dog, well, I don't say the second dog. Next dog is I-5 Wrangler, Bruce Menard, pointer female.
Hey, let's go, guys. Good luck, gentlemen. It was 40 degrees and raining when the first brace turned loose on Pine Top. Only seconds in, the first raindrop hit the camera lens, the first of many. Shortly after, Bloom's Molly stopped to the left. Bird, one's up. Middle one's up. About six birds left that stand, and while that was taking place, we heard a shot up ahead for Madison. Found out later that Madison had bobbled on the bird. Moments later, Molly was stopped along the wall, but doesn't look sure. We figured she stopped on the scent for Madison's bird, and she was taking on without a flushing attempt. Through the middle, both dogs worked hard, but no birds were seen. Both were stopped near the half. It looked like Madison was backing, but they may have been backing each other. Neither handler flushed and both dogs were collared on. There was no bird work the second half and the brace finished without incident. All right, gentlemen, this is the second brace on the first day of the 18th Grand National Grouse and Woodcock Invitational. On my left is Mr. Dwelling with Sun Sun Cave, Maggie May. On my right, Mr. Hughes with Penn Star. Rain continued as Penstar and Sunkay's Maggie May were loosed on the cemetery course. Both reached in the first fields but were hunting.
At about 12, Maggie stopped to the left and was buried in a thick patch of mountain laurel. It was not an easy place to flush. Mike did the best job he could, but nothing was seen. Moved on, Maggie worked the area and then went to the front. Penstar was big and bold, with several short absences. The rain was making hearing on both ends difficult. At 18, Maggie stopped to the left. Oh, here goes. Penstar was found standing deep forward and right. Dave Hughes flushed thoroughly, but nothing was seen. Penstar was a bit tight after standing so long in a cold rain. But he warmed up, worked out the area, and then headed to the front. Before we got caught up, Sunkay's Maggie May had a second woodcock find, and Penstar bobbled on the back. When time for the hour was called and Maggie hustled in, many felt she had made a strong move for Day Dog. Penstar continued big and bold the second half but had no bird contacts. This is the third race, the 18th Grand National. Dawson Woodcock Invitational, first day. On my left is Mr. Bernard with High Five Wrangler. On my right is Mr. Butler with Quail Trap Tom. dogs hustled out the course off the breakaway. Early in the race, Quill Trap Tom stopped to the left. He did not look sure when seen. But this early in the championship and this early in the brace, Vance Butler was taking no chances.
Not surprisingly, nothing flew. Minutes later, Tom stopped again to the left in some thick pines with Wrangler backing. It's a bit too thick in there for the camera to catch that bird. But five minutes later, Vance Butler put that bird from in front of Quail Trap Tom right past us. It was Tom's second find. Wrangler was going well through the middle, and Tom was getting stronger as the brace progressed. Then we heard a yip in the distance, and Wrangler came to heel. We thought her day might be over. Bruce checked her out thoroughly and then sent her on, and she was game. Not only did she finish, but she finished going pretty well. And Tom had a nice finish, too. Both dogs took to the edge of the cornfield slash feed plot and went. By 15, both dogs were forward, reaching, but handling. By 20, we hadn't heard either dog for several minutes. They were both found standing deep down a hill to the left. Elvis was to the left and Bud to the right and a little behind in the cover. Judge Gorman had called a bird, and both handlers shot simultaneously. At the left turn off the road, both dogs were wide and forward. Both handlers waited, and John Stogaitis sent out Mike Flewelling to scout.
Elvis was back first, but after several minutes, Chase Hill Little Bud showed up to the front too. At 40, Bud stopped near the trail and had a woodcock find. Then he had a bobble in this feed plot. There was no quit in either of these two, and they were strong and forward to the end of the brace. Don's been called. Get too hot today. All right, gentlemen, this is the 18th Grand National Grouse and Woodcock Invitational. Fifth brace of the first day. On my left is uh, Stokely's Ginger B with Mark Foreman. On my right is Electric Bell with Mr. Lean. <laughs> Let's go, guys. Rod Lean was in the whole way from Wisconsin with Electric Bell, and Bell had a distinct disadvantage. She had only seen bare ground once since November. She looked right at home in the cover, though. Ginger B was reaching in the first field and then checking back. And it was Ginger B who would connect first out along the stone wall. Minutes later, Bell posed up along another stone wall. After a pretty good flushing effort by Rod Lane, she loosened up and Rod moved her. She worked around for several minutes, after which I headed for the front. But Bell wasn't done. She went over the wall and stopped again and pointed the only grouse of the championship. About 10 minutes later, Bell stopped into the left. Something didn't look quite right to Rod though, and he moved her on. About five minutes later, she looked very intense here, with Ginger B backing. Flash there.
Both dogs hunted well through the middle. Error and it's shutting off. At 50, Ginger B stopped to the left. Electric bell back manor. Oh, It looked like a great spot for a woodcock, but nothing was seen. Up the hill, both fished well and without further incident. Grand National Grouse and Woodcock in the day station. First day, six brace. On my left is Mark Mark Horn with Katie's first. On my right, Mr. Wright, Mr. Both dogs moved out well in the first brush of fields. Sadie Squires was looking for a thick spot, which seemed to have included fog. Early on, Rocco was hunting some thickets on the other side of a stone wall when his bell fell silent to the front.
He didn't look quite sure, and Dave Tahar moved him after a brief flushing effort. Thereafter, Rocco made two or three nice big swings to the front and then was lost to judgment for the hour at 15. Sadie continued to look for birds. Her efforts were rewarded at 20. Sadie's owners, George and Karen Nero, enjoyed that piece of work. Sadie continued to hunt the course the second half, but with no further bird work. Thank you. Two nice going pointers were in the last race of day one. Only minutes in, Sunkay's fast break, or Clifford as he is called, stopped down the hill to the left. Remember this distinctive wood pile here. You'll be seeing it later.
Clifford didn't want to move. He thought there was something there. And when he did move, he worked out the area carefully. Then he headed for the front. Wild Apple Jack was hunting well, lying forward, checking in from the distance and heading back out. At about 25, Clifford stopped, moved, then stopped harder again. A woodcock flushed as we went in. And the smoke from Mike Flewelling's 32 filled the woods. After a long day of rain, parts of the courses were becoming flooded. But neither dog seemed to mind. Clifford finished well and was named Dog of the Day. Wild Apple Jack finished well but had no bird contacts. On my right, is Mike Flewelling with Sunk Hayes Fast Break. Good luck, guys. Whenever you're ready. Kicking things off the second day were the same two dogs that finished things up the night before. It was spinning rain, but much warmer than the previous day. The rain would cease completely by the second brace. The skies remained overcast throughout the day and the temperature dropped 15 degrees during the day's running. Both of these stylish pointers hunted the first field of pine top well. Clifford. Wild Apple Jack posed up on the near side of a stone wall at five.
Nothing was seen. During the relocation, we heard a shot up ahead for Clifford, who had a woodcock find. Wild Apple Jack stopped again about five minutes later to the left. But again, nothing flew. Down the slope, both dogs went well and handled kindly. At about 20, both dogs were stopped in the same area. Clifford here, and Jack a little further up ahead. But the judges had seen several deer bound out from this area, and both dogs were collared on with neither handler flushing. Both dogs put down nice efforts the second half, but there was no further bird work. I like that little clock. Yeah. Got a little compass on it, too. Gentlemen, this is the second day's running of the 18th grade National Grouse and Woodcock Invitational. On my left is Mr. Lean with Electric Bell. On my right is Mr. Stogaitis with Chase Hill Bud. Hey, look. I can try. I can try. When the judges are ready, Joan. Both dogs set out hard, and with the rain all but over, Rod Lane took off his raincoat. Both dogs hunted the first brushy fields well. About seven, we didn't hear Bell's bell. Something white was down in the woods, and we thought it was her. Then her bell faded again. It was just a white stone. Neither dog was heard. John Stogaitis found Bell and then also saw a Bud further on and called Rod to the scene. As he was arriving, the woodcock popped. What do you want me? Right there. Uh, you got the bird? Yeah, I do, I do. Both hands shot. 
but it's jumping over to chase a little bud. There's another wooden cock in front of him, and he flushed and shot again. Yeah, I'm glad you played. I saw the bird. Hang on a second. Let me get a second from your back. Only a minute or so later, button the game to the left. I still have the camera on. That's the same one. That right there. There it is. Both dogs continued well down through the middle. At 35, Rod Lane pointed out Bell to the right. Bell was standing in a briar thicket with Bud further on backing. You can get a real good look at it down and show it to you again. Show it to you again. Look in the lower right corner of the screen. Tom, she enjoyed that piece of bird work. Both dogs were well. And with the rain having subsided, I was able to get some of the interesting features of this course. Many miles of which took an amount of vampire to build. Near the cemetery, the foundation of what was a barn. The stream was swelled into a small river, making hearing difficult. But neither dog had too much of a problem with it.
Both dogs finish well and with no further bird work. Thank you very much, Ray. Yeah. We didn't realize we were going fast on the All right, we're sorry. Taking right, second. This is the third grade second day. 18th Grand National Grouse Woodcock Invitational. Before we cut these dogs away. You <laughs> are. Before we cut these dogs away, I'd like to thank thank Dean Frankie Carina for supporting us as well as he does. Yep. <laughs> I don't know, I wouldn't least. shoot a gun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know All right. I'd shooting a gun today. On my left is the Hajarako. On my right is Stukley B. Whenever the judges are ready. You're on the clock, John. Rocco set up boldly to the left and forward and then stopped. He looked like a picture when we saw him. But nothing was seen. Marco Hanwell to the bottom. Jerry moves to two. Three is. Rock again left. Wheel rode back and a woodcock pop. He was getting a stop up to flash. Shortly after, Ginger went up the hill to the left near the original breakaway and stopped. Point was called by George Johnson, who then explained that the bird already left.
Mark Foreman fired and took her out to the road. There we joined the other group again at the crossing. Once again, the swelled stream made handling a bit difficult, but both dogs stayed out forward and kept to the work well. And along this course is another little archaeology project. This canal and those ruins are the remains of an old grist mill. The brace proceeded uneventfully until fifth. There it goes. Both dogs worked well the last 10 minutes, but there was no further bird work and the brace ended with an incident. Johnson, 18th Grand National Grouse and Woodcock Invitational. On your right is Mark Foreman with some squires, and on your left is Van Butler with Quail Trap Tom. Both owners are in the gallery. Some of the same judges. Yes. <laughs> Yo, that story's out, huh? <laughs> It could happen to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Quail Trap Tom were loosed along the cornfield feed plot and both dressed nicely early. Onto the road. At a course turn at about 10, Sadie got birdie and then styled up.
Sadie dug deep into the swamp to the left. About this time, Quail Trap Tom was wide. After an absence of about 10 minutes, Vance Butler was able to handle him back. Across the road, Sadie Squires stopped down to the left on some pines. Wait for your judge. When her style deteriorated, Mark Foreman had no choice but to move her. During this incident and the relocation, we heard three shots up ahead for Quail Trap Tom. He had three woodcock finds in the span of about 100 yards. Sadie Squires would stop again at 50 with Tom backing. Yeah, got it. Both dogs worked well down the stretch, and the brace ended without further incident. This is the 18th International Grouse and Woodcock Invitational. Second day, fifth brace. On my left is Mr. Tahar with Tahar Elvis. On my right is Sun Sunk Hayes Maggie May with Mr. Fruelling. Whenever the judges are ready. Both Maggie and Tahar's Elvis broke away hard on the pine top course. Both laid out nicely in the first fields. Maggie stopped at 10, forward and right. She looked great, and Mike Flewelling saw the bird on the ground and pointed it out before flushing it. Maggie was scouted once or twice, but showed to the front. Elvis laid out forward and handled easily. Bird work was scarce the second half, but both dogs finished well and hunting. On my left is Mr. Menard with High Fly Wrangler. On my right is Mr. Hughes with Penn Star. You got the wrong dog. No, you don't. All right, gentlemen, whenever the judges are ready.
High Fives Wrangler and Long Gone Madison were next on the cemetery course. Both moved nicely through the first few brushy fields. High Fives Wrangler was showing no effects from her injury of the day before. Long Gone Madison was showing up basically in forward every five or six minutes or so. At about 15, Wrangler stopped to the left and mounted the moral patch. She was burning there pretty good. flew, however, and Bruce moved drawn. During this incident, Madison had a woodcock find out to the front. Then at about 20, Madison stopped again. Down past the cemetery and the old barn foundation, both dogs worked well. And when time from the hour was called, both dogs were still going well. Since too fine effort garnered her day dog honors. Oh. Second day, last race. The one that you have been looking for. Uh, on my left is Boone's Molly with Mr. Bressler. On my right is what? Well, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, go. Okay, let's go. The final race of the day was Molly and Penstar. Penstar was wide and forward. Molly was snappy and hunting every step. At 10, Molly stopped forward and to the right. She's a 
when seen, then cleaned up. up. And that's what Spore had no choice but to do. She worked out the area diligently and then headed for the front, pointing again at 15. This time, Penn Star backing. Once again, the flushing effort was short when the dog loosened. After a third find at 28, she was taken up. Penstar, who had one UP already, stood again near the road at 30. When nothing flew, he was moved on. When the reaction fell to he was taken. Take Ended at 35. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready. Can we do that here? Maybe he just don't feel right in the road. All right, gentlemen. This is the third and final day of the 18th Grand National Grouse of the Cock Invitational. On my left is Mr. Bean with Electric Bell. On my right is Mr. Dwelling with Maggie May. Whenever you're the judges are ready, gentlemen. Funkay's Maggie May and Electric Bell broke away into bright sunshine. The skies were blue and it was cold but very windy. Only about three minutes in, Maggie stopped down the hill to the left. Point this way, Mike. this distinctive wood tie. We, we were here with Mike the day before yesterday with Clifford. Maggie was closed up beautifully. Shot where he's been, but I think he's getting out of here. Careful. 
But like Mike's previous trip to this spot, nothing was seen. Maggie worked out the area thoroughly and then headed for the front. Yep, careful. We hustled to catch up, and when we got there, we were told that Maggie had had a bobble on a bird. She was left down, though, to serve as a bracemate. Electric Bell, who was doing a pretty good job hunting the cover down through the middle. To the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the right. It did not, not look like a shot, but it wasn't of a city of where our rock will flush, flush the city. Yep. And then, and then the dog, dog moved on. Near the road cross, both dogs were up again. He was pointing in the clump of cover, and Bell was on the far side of it backing. Mike swung up in position and then allowed time for Rod Lean to stand by his dog. Both dogs were taken up at 35. Final day. 18th grade national crowds are much darker. On my left. <laughs> on my right. On the main's fast break with Mike Flewelling. On my left is Quail Trap Tom with Vance Butler. Whenever the judges are ready, guys. With the first brace of the finals up early, Quail Trap Tom and Sun K's Fast Break were in the driver's seat. Fast Break was day dog the first day and had bird work the second day as well. Quail Trap Tom came into the finals with five woodcock finds under his belt. Five, Clifford stood at the far end of the field. There was plenty of cover there and a nice little wet spot.
but nothing flew. And we headed to the front. Tom had another short absence, the same spot as the previous day, but showed from the right. Both dogs were working well down through the middle. At about 30, Quail Trap Tom stopped hard. Woodcock flushed out immediately, towered up and landed about 40 feet away to the right. I tried to get it on video, but it took off a second time. Still a lot of water laying around from the rain, but neither dog seemed to mind. At 40, Clifford dug down over the hill into the little gully, and his bell stopped. It was not an easy spot for a human to get to. It was pretty calm down in that gully, but as Mike collared Clifford back up to the course, the wind was howling. There was no need to rush to get caught up this time. Vance Butler was not out to the front. Quail Trap Tom had gone wide again and did not return. A superb scouting effort by Bruce Minard found Tom with a woodcock in front of his nose for a great piece of work. Vance never did catch up. Up front, Clifford continued to lay out forward and hunt the cover nicely while still staying in contact with his handler. As the hour wound down, Judge Gorman counted down the seconds.
for Tom Frucci from Michigan. Thank you. 